You have zero chance of winning, Strider. You only have knife. I have gun. The lead character of Capcom's Strider series is Strider Hiryu, also known as Hiryu. Hiryu is a secret agent belonging to an elite group of ninja mercenaries known as Striders, who have specialized in kidnapping, assassination, destruction, and other sorts of operations that they have carried out in the past for the sake of the greater good. They are thought to be the descendants of the ninja from feudal Japan and are among the most powerful covert manipulative organizations in the world. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video and learn more about this enigmatic mercenary. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a whole lot. So thank you, and let's begin. Target confirmed. Commencing operation. I will eliminate all obstacles. Who will come out on top? Ready! Hiryu's backstory from the manga series. The only thing that is known about Hiryu's history is that he is an orphan of Asian descent who once claimed a Japanese identity while wearing a disguise. Along with Kubira, Kane, and Shina, he participated in the Strider's training program and became good friends with the latter two. Hiryu excelled in every discipline throughout his training. His impressive proficiency at such a young age earned him notoriety among the other striders for his superhuman strength and command of the cipher. His sister, Maria, whom he loved and admired, was also a member of the striders. But on that tragic day, Maria abruptly lost her mind and killed ten strider trainees. Director Kuramoto opted to give her brother the job to stop her because of her prowess, a choice he subsequently regretted. Despite his best efforts to reason with his insane sister, Hiryu is ultimately compelled to kill her for his own safety. Hiryu would be troubled by this episode for a very, very long time. After murdering his sister, Hiryu lost all will to live and became more rash and more negligent on missions, becoming a force of destruction who just wanted to perish in combat. Director Kuramoto offers Hiryu what would be his last assignment as a strider six months after Miria's passing, to free Dr. J. Hogan, the foremost expert in nuclear fusion, and kill his kidnappers, the terrorist organization known as the Phantom Unit. Since Hiryu has been experiencing emotional instability since the death of his sister, Kane expressively objects to Kuramoto's choice to send him on such a risky mission alone. However, unbeknownst to either of them, Kuramoto had purposely assigned Hiryu to a perilous mission in hopes that, if he survived it, he would be able to get over his grief and move on. Hiryu discovers the enemy outpost in the middle of a cold tundra, enters, and begins ruthlessly slaughtering everybody who gets in his way. The Zongi brothers, the leaders of the terrorist organization, soon face him. The older brother, disguised as Hogan, manages to hurt Hiryu's left arm and capture him. Hiryu escapes by detonating bombs he had planted to blow up the entire base and then using his cipher to electrocute the area, instantly killing all remaining soldiers and severely burning one of the brothers, Aaron. Hiryu is worn out from the attack and begins questioning whether his time has come, but he is adamant about taking his adversaries down with him. Jumping to engage Aaron in the last duel, Hiryu is taken aback when Aaron's brother shoots him from behind Aaron's back. Hiryu gets struck directly in the chest, but he twists in midair and launches his climb sickle at the brothers, killing the elder one quickly by hitting him in the forehead. He then confronts the outraged Aaron and dispatches him with ease. Hiryu examines the injury after he is knocked to the ground and sees that his sister's necklace, which he was wearing, had blocked the bullet. Hiryu makes a new commitment to live his life to the fullest in Maria's memory, taking it as a sign that she wouldn't want him to die in this manner. After saving Dr. Hogan, Hiryu vanishes, leaving the group to live a different existence. Kuramoto's plan included giving Hiryu the opportunity for a special retirement after the mission since he believed he was no longer qualified to serve as a Strider. Later, Kuramoto declares that Strider Hiryu has passed away. After that, Hiryu decided to establish his new home on a tiny plateau in Mongolia with Rin, a little child he befriended there who was a member of a hamlet of Mongolian nomads residing at the base. Hiryu lived simply in this area for the next couple of years, believing that only Kuramoto knew about his whereabouts. Then one day, Matic emerged at the hamlet, 
planning to drag him out for one more mission to kill Cain, who was kidnapped by Kazakh and became a burden for the organization. Here you first objects, since he's given up on that aspect of his life for a very long time, but Maddox threatens Rin's life and the lives of the helpless villagers if he doesn't comply. Here you grudgingly consents, as the villagers are already aware of his past. Here you and Sheena are reunited in an abandoned structure where they land in Kazakh. Sheena was thrilled to see him again, but even though here you doubted he could murder Kane, he kept it a secret from her. Together they locate and rescue a comatose Kane from the secret police headquarters, then flee the snow by taking refuge in one of the rebels army's safe houses. When Kane ultimately regains consciousness, he strikes Hiryu and Sheena at once. Sheena suffers a deadly injury and passes away in Kane's clutches before Hiryu fights and subdues him. Hiryu discovers an odd implant within Kane's neck and coerces the secret police chief who is being held hostage to tell the truth about the Enterprise Zane project and its brainwashing tool. After learning that his sister Sheena's madness was brought on by the same implant and helping the recovered Kane deal with his grief over having murdered her, Hiryu makes a promise to stop the project and everybody working in it. The following morning, Hiryu cuts off his ponytail to symbolize his will to bring down the Enterprise and they bury Sheena. Later, Hiryu and Kane locate the Zane laboratory concealed inside the Kazakh Federation Mental Institute where Hiryu finds one Zane terminal and learns about Maddox's role in this conspiracy. Following the terminal's destruction, they learn from the Institute's director that further terminals are being built and that any attempt is futile as long as the main computer is still functional. Using this information, they decide to attack the Amazon Institute next and utilize the satellite link on the terminal to locate the primary Zane and the organization's headquarters. Stridus, Irana, and Kubira assault them under Maddox's instructions while they're in the Amazon. Here you infiltrates one of the rescue airships assigned to help the injured from the facility's explosion, defeating both Striders in combat and securing a route for him and Kane to get into the Enterprise's headquarters. Here you and Kane try to infiltrate Enterprise after getting to the Los Angeles headquarters under the guise of repairers, with Here you posing as a Japanese engineer, Ryuji Asuka. When Maddox finally finds them, they quickly flee in part ways, with Here you battling the oncoming troops and murdering Secretary Yuri. When Here you reaches the structure's top floor, Fasias Clay meets him and discusses his philosophy of seeing people as flawed products and his desire to change it. Clay's mechanical bodyguard, unable to persuade him, is forced upon him, but Hiryu eventually destroys it and executes Clay. Hiryu, worn out after the challenging combat, is trapped by Maddox, who discloses his plans to seize control of Enterprise and the Striders and blame Hiryu and Kane for Kiramoto's demise. However, thanks to Kane's timely entry, Hiryu could stand against Maddox despite his injuries. Kuramoto enters the battle, showing that all Striders are now opposed to Maddox. When Maddox is cornered, he threatens everyone with a bomb. But Mother Zane, who has just awakened, kills him. Here you notices the machine's core as it begins to assault everyone, and he launches his cipher at it, demolishing Zane and its tower and effectively putting an end to the Enterprise. Here you swiftly leaves the area, and Kane and Kuramoto converse about him in conclusion. After glancing in the opposite direction, Hiryu walks away, leaving his cipher lying on the ground. The Hiryu we encounter in the games. We come across different backgrounds of Hiryu in different versions of the Strider games. Strider 1989 In the first Strider game, it is known that Hiryu was born in a village in the Tungus areas in the year 2030. However, his background information is classified because he is an active agent. Here you quickly rose to the top position in the organization, displaying abilities well above those of any other Strider. His peers can quickly recognize him, thanks to the high kanji symbol on his chest and the crimson ribbon he wore around his waist. At the age of 16, here you momentarily left the organization and didn't return again until he was 18 in order to defeat Grandmaster Meiyo. Following Mayo's destruction of Earth, the Striders are recruited to handle the situation, and Hiryu is assigned the challenging duty of thwarting Mayo's ambitions, investigating St. Petersburg, the location of Mayo's base, and the capital of Kazakhstan, is how Hiryu starts his quest. 
Here you attempt to exit the continent through Siberia after infiltrating and eliminating its entire officer's council, fending off pursuing individuals who are trying to obtain a prize Mayo has promised for his head. Along the way, here you discovers a hidden Mayo base, repels the attack of the bounty hunter Solo, vanquishes the Kung Yong martial arts team, and learns about the location of the flying battleship Balrog, Mayo's most important potent weapon from the team's captain Tong Pu. Hirio sneaks into the air fortress and, along with his chief, Captain Beard Jr., destroys it by calling it nothing more than a toy. Hirio finds that Mayu had revived dinosaurs in the area after defeating the Balrog by following signs of abnormal activity in the Amazon connected to him. An Amazonist tells Hirio about Mayo's hiding place, the Third Moon, after defeating the mechanical dinosaur Lago. Hirio infiltrates the orbital station, engages Mayo's last soldiers, destroys the station's core, and then confronts Mayo in an escape pod after learning about Mayo's evil, the Third Moon plan. Hiryu returns to Earth after fighting Mayo as the third moon disintegrates. As it calmly swims away into the distance, he eventually lands on a whale. Strider 2, 1999 In the second game, Strider 2, not much is known about Hiryu apart from the fact that he is a 20-year-old male. Although there may be some relation between him and the Strider who fought Grandmaster Mayo 2,000 years ago, it is unknown. He is known to use the same pseudonym. He frequently collaborated with a fellow Special A agent, Heon, and the two eventually grew close. The Striders were killed by Heon's treachery shortly after Hiryu was assigned to kill Grandmaster Mayo, leaving Hiryu as the lone survivor. Hiryu chooses to complete the Strider's ultimate assignment, even if it puts him against the entire world. Rather than dwelling on his feelings for the group he was once a member of, here you suddenly learns that Strider Heon has united with Grandmaster Mayo while looking into suspicious behavior into the ancient remains of El Dorado. Strider Heon had previously liberated Grandmaster Mayo from his grave. Upon entering the chamber shortly after Grandmaster Mayo exits, both Striders engage in a brief battle until Heon tries to persuade Hiryu that it was a mistake for him to challenge the creator of the universe and everything on it. Grandmaster Mayo. Hiryu dismisses his pleading and instructs him to remind Mayo that he is the hunter and the prey, and he also counsels Hien to fight fiercely the next time they cross paths. Later, Hiryu emerges from the shadowy lanes to foil a terrorist attack in Neo Hong Kong City that may have something to do with the Grand Master. He enters the strongly guarded fortress, Wanen, while looking for the source of technology where they both perish along with Herzog Schlong. Then after learning that there is a research facility in Antarctica, Hiryu destroys it in order to make the unknown forces that control the globe disclose themselves. Hiryu finds the position of the flying warship Barlog after executing his strategy successfully. He takes Admiral Wilhelm's escape ship to the third moon after slaying the commander and destroying the Balrog where he meets the Grand Master. Here you battles his way through the Third Moon's protection mechanisms before locating and destroying the station's gravity core. Hyen, who is now prepared to fight properly, confronts Hiryu as he makes his way to Mayo's room. After disposing of his old buddy, Hiryu makes his way to the unified Earth Control section where Grandmaster Mayo welcomes him and launches an attack. Mayo sends the bioweapon Caduceus after being defeated in his attack, but he can only watch as Hiryu's blade destroys it. Mayo, vulnerable and at Hiryu's mercy, wonders if the guy he just slashed down is the same one who blocked his way 2,000 years before. But he gets no response. Finally, shortly before the third moon erupts, Hiryu announces his mission has been successful. Strider 2014 About Hiryu's history, nothing is known. He is tasked with killing Grandmaster Mayo, who is in charge of the whole planet at the time, in the year Mayo 0048. Hiryu accepts the job without hesitation even though it is risky and suicidal, which has already taken the lives of 11 other Striders. He then makes his first move inside Kazakh City, Mayo's capital. Hiryu expertly navigates the city's periphery as he descends from the skies on his glider while dodging hostile fire. Hiryu moves across the region, destroying legions of light troopers standing in his way. 
after a battle with the enormous bioweapon Auroboros MK3, he ultimately penetrates the city's historic district. When the enemy learns about Hiryu, General Mikkel's soldiers, Mayo's personal assassin squad, the Winds, and hired bounty hunter Solo pursue him around the region. Hiryu successfully makes it to the door of Mayo's tower, where the dictator is rumored to reside, after engaging in several skirmishes across the complex. Hiryu finds the doors locked by three mechanisms and begins looking for the power supply. He first encounters the prisoner, one of Mayo's former researchers after sneaking into the military prison. He receives a request from the crazed guy to find the black marketer, the resistance's commander for assistance. Deep down Kazakh City's underground, Hiryu continues his task before ultimately running into the black marketer. The elderly man chooses to assist him because they both have Mayo as an adversary, but not before seeking Hiryu for assistance and battling a terrifying multipede frightening the populace. The Gravitron gravity controls units, which must be deactivated or destroyed to enter Mayo's tower. This is the key to the structure, the marketer tells Hiryu after taking care of the beast. Hiryu follows his instructions and enters the buried temple to obliterate the first Gravitron unit. When Hiryu returns to the surface world, he runs into the prisoner again, who directs him to the second Gravitron in the research facility that Professor Schlong is guarding. As Hiryu makes his way to the facility, he confronts and eliminates the dishonest Mikkel. Hiryu endures many trials before defeating the second Gravitron and Schlong's masterwork, the mechanical ape Mecha Pawn, after surviving all attempts on his life. Shortly after, Grandmaster Mayo confronts Hiryu as he puts the insane scientist to death. He is helpless as Mayo launches him headfirst into the underground dump. Hiryu and Black Marketer reconvene on the underground. He informs the elderly man that he still requires another key to proceed, and the Marketer instructs him to seek out Jurong, a fervent devotee of Mayo, in order to obtain the key that he requires. In the buried temple, Hiryu encounters the shaman and kills him to obtain the magnetic cipher. With it, Hiryu enters the war room and calls for the airship Balrog, which is the last Gravitron. Using option C to get the airship, Hiryu engages a group of skiffs in combat to get inside. He encounters an unstable and revived Solo in the Gravitron chamber, whose only objective is to kill him. The door to Mayo's tower opens once the three seals have been broken and Hiryu enters. He opens the orbital lift, ascends to Mayo's chambers at the top of the tower, and engages in combat with the remnants of Mayo's army. Grandmaster Mayo makes himself known to him, praising Hiryu for exposing his colleagues in competence and outlining his scheme to wipe off all life on Earth and replace it with his genetically modified perfect race. Hiryu politely declines his invitation to join him, calling him a dead man. In the intense struggle that ensues, Mayo is unable to defeat Hiryu. Mayo transforms into his actual self while transporting him to the third moon outpost above Earth's orbit, where he makes one final futile attempt to murder him. Hiryu dives into Mayo's body as it burns upon the atmospheric re-entry after being finally beaten and falls back towards the Earth. In front of Mayo's tower, where he last appears, Hiryu declares his mission successful. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 To combat Lady Deathstrike and the Reavers, Strider Hiryu partners up with Wolverine. He calls forth his legion of robots as well as a group of X-Men to face her head-on, well aware that Deathstrike does not battle with honor. Target confirmed. Commencing operation. I pursue sinners without end. Try to keep up. Who will come out on top? Ready! Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Hiryu is one of the heroes that raids Ultron Sigma compromised X-Guard 88 days after the Convergence. He is one of the three heroes along with Chun-Li and Rocket Raccoon who join the rescue operation led by Chris Redfield and Doctor Strange to find the prisoner, who is crucial to stopping the fused robot while the other heroes attempt to divert Ultron Sigma. The rescue operation is sparked by Doctor Strange's discovery that Ultron Sigma has imprisoned someone that they have previously defeated. The 
prisoner was soon identified as Thanos, and Rocket protested and refused to cooperate with the Titan out of concern that the heroes could be betrayed soon. However, without any other options, thanks to Doctor Strange and Captain America's trust, the heroes needed Thanos' assistance under the specific conditions to ensure that Thanos would never turn on them from behind. What makes Strider Hiryu so lethal? Hiryu exhibits superhuman talents in fighting which are accentuated by his remarkable agility and quickness. Although he seldom engages in unarmed combat, Hiryu has attained superhuman proficiency in hand-to-hand -hand combat and possesses above average physical strength, enabling him to sever an opponent's limbs with just his bare hands as if he were using his cipher. Hiryu's body has been fine-tuned via specialized training giving him the freedom to move about in any situation or position, even when climbing or hanging from buildings. He also has the swift movements and agility to accomplish high acrobatic acts like backflips and cartwheel leaps. His speed may be hypersonic or even higher, although that hasn't been proven yet. He is seen to move and attack quicker than the human eye can see, covering great distances in the span of a single blink and moving so quickly that he leaves behind many after images of himself. The Plasma Sword Cypher, which here you can wield at any time and from any position, is his preferred weapon. It is widely believed among the Striders that he is more adept at using the Cypher than anybody else. Hiryu's main method is to draw closer to his opponent before launching a single Cypher strike to split the opposition in two. This strategy is made possible by his trained body and technique. Elements have been used by Hiryu in his assaults. He strikes his adversary with an electric spark and spark ball. A fireball can also be launched towards his adversaries. As numerous Hiryu's assault his opponents simultaneously in Ragnarok, he has demonstrated to be able to clone himself. Strider, you have done it! I can feel the tie has been cut! The line broken! That was only the prototype! <laughs> there are others. Other crap. Marvelous Verdict Hiryu is stern and silent, always maintaining his composure even when engaged in combat. When he does speak, which is infrequent, he is direct and to the point, sparing no time for useless chatter or threats. Hiryu has a strong character and is constantly committed to completing the duty he has been given. When it comes to those he trusts, he is more approachable and cordial, even making fun of them. But when it comes to his enemies, he will have no mercy especially if they cause harm to innocent people. From the perspective of his adversaries, he nearly seems like a devil due to his no-nonsense demeanor, propensity, and speaking in brief, harsh phrases and tremendous confidence in battle. Hey, if you liked our content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. And in the meantime, have a good one and be safe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.